Here we are at the home of Alan Diane Collins, some of the first people at Timberwood Church. Can't wait to talk to them about what they've got to say about the past. Here we go. Knock, knock. Hey there, come on in. How are we doing? You're doing well. How Good are you? How's work? Where did Timberwood start in your mind? Uh, I would say at uh, Sue Lofquist's house, who is now Sue Lauer, of course. Um, we first met there with three couples and probably June of 2003, thereabouts, mm -hmm. and there was six of us. So then there was another large group that came over and joined us, so we had to quit meeting at the Rockquist house and find someplace else to meet. So we wound up at the community center, and things just kind of grew from there, as you're well aware. So was the plan always to start a church, or was it just kind of like, let's get together and hang out and then... No, there, there really wasn't a plan, I don't think, on our part, on any of us. Uh, however, at the time, the Lofquist lived next to uh, Leith Anderson, the pastor of Wooddale Church. And Leith had had a vision of building a church in Niswa, or starting a church in Niswa. So he had been talking to the Lofquist about it. Wooddale did a fabulous job. Um, they would send videos of Leith Anderson's sermons, so we would watch a sermon and then we could discuss it in either smaller groups or generally and um, that's how it went for quite a while. And then after a bit, Wooddale started sending a pastor up from the cities every week and we would actually um, get to hear someone from Wooddale and that was exciting. So things were working. And it wasn't long after that where we had a meeting and they said they had an announcement and John was sitting in front of us and he kind of turned around and gave us that wink, you know. And I, I guess I wasn't really sure what was going on at the time, but yeah, there was this young buck that we hired mm -hmm. and his name was John Jess. So everything has uh, worked out very well since. Did you ever think he would last 10 years? Well, yes, because he made it a point of telling us that he had passed his site evaluation at Wooddale. <laughs> so I thought he would probably be okay. First, how did hospitality come about? That's an interesting story. When we were a smaller group and meeting at the community center, maybe 50 people or so, um, there was this lovely lady that I met by the name of Barb Allen. And she said, I think we need to have coffee and dessert. So she started bringing some desserts and coffee and I walked up to her and I said, well, would you like some help? And I'd love to make something and bring it and she thought that was great. So that's kind of how hospitality began. And then when we finally started the church on Sunday mornings, we would use the kitchen and we would serve coffee and we'd go to Schaefer's and pick up donuts and it was pretty simple, mm -hmm. but it worked and everybody loved it, and that's where it started. Were people as crazy about their coffee back then as they are now? Yes. Pretty they, much. They, they <laughs> really were. And I think that's what really got the community of Timberwood started, because people would stick around afterwards. You know, it was all in one building in the community center. And they had no place to go except go home, and the smell of coffee drew them right to the coffee pot and the rolls. So on their way out, it was close by, and they just lined up for coffee. At what point did you say, this thing is really going to work? It was, I was kind of amazed because we were floating along with one sermon a Sunday, and then all of a sudden, John says, well, we're going to two services a Sunday. And I'm thinking to myself, John, are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> I said, we hardly have enough people to fill up one service, but you know, you, you have several people that you have to cater to. You got, and of course, I never thought that after that because things just moved and uh, you know it continued to grow because we had two services uh, we were getting very packed especially on an Easter Sunday I can't recall I think we probably had two services yes. uh, on every Easter Sunday while we were there how have you the two of you grown as you've been on this journey over the last 10 years with Timberwood Go ahead. well I think we've just grown learning about the discipline of starting a church and how that all comes together. I think we've grown in our knowledge of learning to love other people even though you might have some differences. 
uh, was structured by Wooddale. That's how it was. And it just worked better than having this person want this or this person want that. It was absolutely amazing. And I grew a lot just learning that discipline, I think. And you, you come to realize that this church isn't about me at all. And I think that's what has sometimes even kept us there. It's not about me. Our own growth, I think, was has been tremendous because we've met an awful lot of great people. And, um, I believe a lot more in God now than I did at the time. So, you know, I've seen what he's capable of doing. Sure. Mm -hmm. when, when we first had our very first service at the new building, as we opened the building that was just for the members, Leith Anderson was there and he spoke to us that night. And I will never forget one thing that he said. He said, don't ever stop being grateful for what you have here. He said, there will be problems, they will come. But he said, always remember how good God has been to you in bringing this to fruition. And I always remember that. My favorite is the day he came with the campfire stove. And I don't recall what he was going to do with it, but the campfire stove wasn't very well controlled and we had this large flame going on. <laughs> so John's running to the door and, I, and of course I'm sitting in the back as I usually did, you know, with invite latecomers and stuff in and I happen to think, oh man, this is trouble. So I reached up, I started flicking the light on and off in the, in the uh, community center. There was kind of a little panic there for a while because John was running to the door with the fire. And this is one I remember the most. <laughs> He does love his visual aids. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there a chainsaw once? Oh, he's had chainsaws, yes. Mm -hmm. So, did you have sound issues back then, too? No. <laughs> <laughs> Only recently. <laughs> the sound level is just so much better now yeah. than it used to be. Yeah. Oh, I was, I thought it was just amazing music. Ten years. It's been a great experience for yes. us. Yes. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't trade it for anything. Right. So, you ready to start another church? No. <laughs> <laughs>